Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to take a look at the new Yuzu emulator that's available for Android. And if you've been following emulation for the past few years, you're probably already familiar with Yuzu. They make one of the best Nintendo Switch emulators available on both Windows and Linux, so it's pretty exciting to see it here on Android, and it just released yesterday. Now before we get started, there are some limitations with this app in particular. For example, right now it's only been developed for Qualcomm or Snapdragon chips. In addition, you need to be running at least Android 11 to get this to work. That means devices like the Odin Pro and Pimax Portal will not be able to play this. But if you have a more recent Snapdragon device, like an 865 or higher, you should be good to go. Anyway, I'm hoping this will be a short video here, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first things first, it's actually pretty easy to find the Yuzu emulator. You can find it directly on the Google Play Store starting today. Now, when you first search for a Yuzu emulator, you may see some other options like Daemon or Egg. I would strongly recommend avoiding these applications right here. They are known to be using stolen code, and they've done some other shady things in the past that I don't really want to get into here in this video. Instead, I want to focus on the positive, so we're going to talk about Yuzu here. Now, to start, there are two different options available. There's the regular one and an early access build, and this is very similar to the desktop versions of Yuzu. However, due to the pay model with Google Play Store, it's a little bit different. So with early access here, it's a one-time $5 price. However, if you're already an early access user on the desktop side, they did send out an email saying that they're going to be sending out Google Play Store codes here in the next couple days. Either way, it'll be up to you whether or not you want to pay that $5 one-time fee for the early access or to get the free one instead. The main difference here is that as development continues, they're going to be sending out more updates to the early access one. Now, I've already installed the early access one here on my device, so let's go up to the regular one here and install this one instead. And once we have it installed, let's go ahead and open it up. Now, first thing, they're going to ask you to get your production keys. This is something that you would pull off of a jailbroken switch. And if you don't know how to do any of that stuff, then I'm going to leave a link to the Yuzu Quick Start Guide in the video description. Now, a bug that I noticed here right off the bat is when I try to select my own production keys, I get this invalid key file selected. And I'm not sure what's going on here because this is the exact same file that I use with my desktop client. Either way, there's a pretty easy workaround for this. I'll show you that here in a minute. So what we're going to do here is just bypass this and skip adding the keys. Next, it's going to ask us to identify our games folder. So we're going to tap on add games, and then I'm going to navigate to my SD card. And then for me, I've got it in my games folder and then switch. Once I'm in the correct folder, I'm going to tap on this little button on the bottom that says use this folder. From there, I'm going to allow Yuzu to have access to this folder here. From there, we can tap on next and it's going to say we're all good to go. But if you remember, we were not able to import our production keys. So let's go back and actually fix that next. Now for this part, I recommend using a file manager app. So this one here, file manager plus is the one that I'm going to be using here. I like this one because it gives me access to everything within my Android file system. So here we are within this app. I'm going to go back to my downloads folder and find my production keys file. Here I'm going to long press on it and then select copy. And now we're going to find the place to put our keys. So we'll go back to the home page here and into main storage and then Android and then the data folder. From there, we can scroll all the way down and we should find our Yuzu folders here. And since we're working with the regular app, not the early access one, that's the one I'm going to go inside of. Within here, you'll find a folder named files. We'll open that one up. And within that one, we will find a folder named keys. We're going to go inside here and then click on the paste button. And there we are. We have now manually installed our production keys file. Now, if we go back to our Yuzu menu and then refresh the page, here we are. These are all of my games. Next up, let's check out the settings section here on the top left. Now, within the advanced settings, you'll see a lot of these same options that you have within the desktop client of Yuzu. For example, within the system settings, we can turn on docked mode if we want to have better graphics. And then also under the graphics side, we can do things like upscale the resolution, turn on vSync and things like that. All this is really going to depend on how powerful of a device you have to work with. Now also within the main settings menu, there's an option to install a GPU driver. And that's one thing that's special about Qualcomm chips is that many of them have custom drivers that you can install. I'm going to leave a link to the Yuzu Discord page if you want to read more about that and install your own. And there's also a really handy GitHub repository that has a lot of them as well. Now, personally, I tested this app on two different devices, which we'll talk about here in a second. And for both of them, when I tried to install custom drivers, none of them worked correctly. In fact, every single game I tried with each of these custom drivers just made the games crash. So when you see all of my testing here, I'm just going to be using the default system GPU driver. And I think these custom drivers are something that will mature over time. So that's just a quick look at the most important settings for me. So let's go ahead and start up a game and talk about that experience. Now to start, when the game first pops up, you're going to see that it has on-screen controls. And that's going to be great if you don't have a controller hooked up to your device, but I do. And so as we start up this game, let's go ahead and turn off that overlay. 
To do this, we're gonna swipe from the left to bring up this quick menu here. And then within the input overlay section, we got a couple options here. First, I'm going to toggle on the frames per second counter. From there, we'll go back into the input overlay and then there's an option to show overlay or not. I'm gonna uncheck that and that's gonna get rid of all these buttons here on my screen. And there you have it. If you have a controller hooked up to your device, it should now be working with those buttons. Now, one thing to note is that as of right now, the Yuzu app does not have the ability to map your controls. And so for example, here with a backbone controller hooked up to a phone, unfortunately the A, B, and X, Y buttons are swapped. And so if you're used to the button layout on a Nintendo Switch, this is gonna feel a little bit weird. It's more like an Xbox style right here. And so hopefully in the future, we will see custom button mapping for this app. Now, once you're done playing and you wanna exit out of an app, you just wanna swipe from the left again and then select exit emulation. That'll take you back to the main menu. Now for my testing, I tried two different devices. Up top, we have the LG V60 with a Snapdragon 865. And then down below, we have the Razer Edge with a Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 chip. Now the processor in the Edge is much more powerful than the V60, but I did find that the app was a lot more unreliable on the Edge. In fact, I only got about three or four games to actually boot. Now don't get me wrong, this app is in its very early stages and so it crashed a lot on my V60 as well. But when it came to practical use, I would much rather use the V60 than the Razer Edge. That one basically crashed most of the time and so that was really frustrating. And so I think that yes, in time, I will probably prefer to use the Edge for this app, but for the rest of the video here, I actually ended up just using the V60 with the Backbone controller attached. And the Snapdragon 865 chip that's within the V60 is the bare minimum that the Yuzu team recommends. So if you have anything more current and powerful, you're probably gonna get better results than what I'm gonna show here in this video. But I think that's a good time now to move into our performance testing to give you an idea of what you can expect. When it came to lightweight or indie games, you know, the kind that you can find on an eShop, these ones ran relatively well. For example, with Celeste here, it is running at a full 60 frames per second. Not only that, it looks like the graphics are pretty darn accurate right here. And bear in mind that across all of my testing here, I'm going to be playing in handheld mode. Moving on from there, here is a short hike. This is one of my favorite games to play on the Nintendo Switch. And with most other emulators, you get a lot of graphical issues. And here with this early build of Yuzu, we're actually getting some very accurate graphics. However, it is not playing at full speed, as you can see here on the top left of the screen. And same thing with Bastion. This game just couldn't keep up full speed, but did have some pretty good graphical accuracy. And it's the same story with a lot of other indies that I tried, like Cat Quest 2 and Cuphead. And even though some of these did have slowdown, I would say they're still pretty playable, but something like Cuphead was definitely not. And again, I expect this to improve over the months to come. After all, we're looking at just day one right here. Now, there were some games that did have graphical issues. For example, Hades was definitely unplayable, both because it was slow, but then also because of the graphics. And same thing with Super Mario Odyssey. As you can see right here, I couldn't get past this part. But all the same, I was super surprised that this game even launched on this device in the first place. So I think it's a really good sign of what we can expect from Yuzu in the future. I was also surprised to find that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe actually played pretty well. Now, of course, I would consider this to be unplayably slow right here, but all the same, it's pretty amazing that we're playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on a Snapdragon 865. And it was a similar story with Super Mario 3D World. And really, that's about it for this video here. I just wanted to show off a couple of the games that I got working and to help walk you through that installation process. In the end, I'm super excited that we have a new option for emulating Switch on Android, and I'm excited to see what the Yuzu development team can cook up in the next few months. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this pretty cool to be able to play some of these games on a phone, or would you rather play your Nintendo Switch games on the original hardware? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.